<laughs> no shame. We are live. All right. So welcome back to Chai Together, everybody. I am your host and founder, Pratiba Day. Today, you are tuning in for your cup of courage, hope, and imagination today, hence Chai. We use courage on this platform to showcase the stories we use hope to overcome, and we use imagination to resonate and understand what the stories being shared. So with that being said, I'd like to welcome my friend and a really great person, Mr. Jason Goss. <laughs> hi, hi, Pratiba. Thanks. Thank you for having me, and I uh, hope everybody is having a great morning today, and uh, let's, let's do this. Yeah. And I want to say we have the nature sounds today and a lawnmower, so please do enjoy, and thank you, everybody, for those who are tuning in, and he just turned it off. That is called a blessing. Perfect. So, <laughs> I want to tell you, yeah, I want to tell you a bit about Jason. So I met Jason online. Um, Jason, was it through the Power Voice or it was not? You know, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think that you, yeah. I think that the, the tribes that we've been running with have kind of, yeah. been online, so it's just yeah. you know, who, who we know. And, and yeah, before I tell you a bit about Jason, I just want to say that him and his fiance Brissa are just incredible people and they just align with me really well. Just very cool, humble and genuine people. That's a vibe that I get from them. So if you enjoy me, enjoy my show that you're going to enjoy them. Awesome. So Jason Goss is an author, speaker, and certified life coach in the law of attraction that he is. Enduring a household littered with drugs and abuse as a child, he was overwhelmed with hopelessness. When most children should be simply enjoying their childhood, he attempted to end his. Depression is real and it affects many people all over the world. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm excited. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, I do want to say thank you for having this platform because you know what? People need uh, a place to share their stories. People need to learn how to open up and talk about the things, you know, that happen to them in their lives, especially us men. Us men don't know. Well, most men, most men yeah. don't know how to truly open up and share their truth and share their vulnerability and share their mm. transparency. And I was one of them. I was one of them for over 30 years of my life. And it wasn't until I ran into a tribe of servant leaders that taught me how to how to you know just get out there and share my story and 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 find my true purpose and find my true passion was i able to start speaking about these things so i want people to realize that it's okay there's no stigma behind sharing your truth you know let go of of, of that stigma of of showing weakness about talking about your feelings and emotions because we have to talk about them in order to heal one thing i want to say is I really like your posts and content. So those who you aren't sub subscribed to Jason, you really should. Jason, what's your email? <laughs> my my email is is Jason at BeGreaterOfficial.com. And, and Facebook, you can find me on Facebook just at Jason mm -hmm. Goss. And then IG is uh, Jason underscore Goss underscore. That's G-O-S-S. And how can people subscribe? Uh, at the website, you can go to jasongoss.life. I do have a free gift for, for everybody here. Um, it's it's called Seven Steps to Your Freedom, and it's all based around forgiveness. So if you have something that's going on in your life or somebody that you need to forgive, mm -hmm. you can take this this free mini course, and, and that's how uh, that's how I can you can subscribe to to what we've got going on. I really like that because I can definitely use that myself. <laughs> been through a lot of things. Yes, yes. You know what? And and for me as well. And and that's the reason I created it because I didn't forgive my mother in my life for so long. And it just held me back. It it basically, you know, kept me from moving forward in my life. And mm -hmm. until I was able to do that, that's when I really started to excel and started to grow. So mm -hmm. it's huge. Forgiveness is huge. It's not for the person that you're forgiving. It's for yourself. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to start? Do you want to start in childhood? I'll, I'll start in the very. I'll start in the very beginning. So <laughs> I, I just, you know, this blows my mind because I was never able to do this. You know, I was never mm -hmm. able to come up, come out, you know, on on a stage or come out in front right. of me and share my story. And it wasn't until about seven months ago that I was able to do that. But wow, how many of us grow up with limiting beliefs because wow. of things that happen to us as a child? Uh, me <laughs> right ever since i was about four or five years old you know when my memories really started to 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 come to me i the only thing i can remember is is sounds of my dad beating my mom 
you know, wow. it's sounds of, of partying, you know, witnessing drug, drug consumption, witnessing alcohol consumption. And, you know, they were so far in heavily into it that they were taking things from inside of the house in order to pay for their drug habit. My mother was taking things out of the house to pay for her drug habit. And when those things ran short, she came into my room and she was taking my personal belongings out of my room. So over the years, I started to realize, you know what, this isn't right. You know, when you're young, when you're when you're four, five, six, seven years old, you don't really understand. You just think, okay, this is the way life is. But then once you start growing up and you start comparing yourself to other people, you start comparing yourself to your friends and you start seeing how their families and their parents are treating their kids. That comparison is what is what really, really started me on my decline, you know, really started me uh, getting into into a form of depression at that very young age. So I remember coming home one day I was, I was 15 years old. I, I was in high school and I, I remember coming home and I noticed that a computer was gone off of my desk. Wow. Uh, and I was like, you know, where, where's my computer? And it wasn't a computer that it was old, you know, had the floppy mm -hmm. and it had games on it. And it wasn't something mm -hmm. that I really used, you know, for school or anything like that. It was more of a, more of a meditation thing that I used it for. It was, it was mm -hmm. a form for me to quiet my mind. So that really that really hit me hard, and and I was just like, you know what, I'm I'm over it. I'm over it. I I I was living in these feelings of hopelessness and abandonment for so long that I took it upon myself to end my struggle. So I walked to the kitchen and I grabbed a bottle of Tylenol. And I went back to my room and I poured two handfuls. Of, I, actually, one handful. I pulled I poured a handful of, of pills in my hand. I threw them in my mouth and I swallowed, and then I did it again. <clears throat> another huge handful of pills, put them in my, in my mouth and swallowed. There there had to be at least 15 pills there. Mm. So after I swallowed those pills, I remember starting to cry and I remember dropping my knees on the floor of my room. And then that's the last thing I remember until about 12 hours later when I woke up. And when I woke up, I couldn't, I couldn't stand up. I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't gather my bearings. I was, I was hallucinating. I was seeing things. Everything was, was spinning. And somehow I managed to crawl to my bed. And like, when I got to my bed, I laid down and I really thought that this is going to be it. Mm. You know, I really thought that this was going to be it. And then I ended up falling asleep. I woke up in the morning, my head was pounding. You know, I was, I was throwing up all over the place. And the one thing that I remembered when I actually got to the living room was that nobody even realized what I had done. My mom was already gone for the day. She already went off. She was doing her thing, you know, with her with her friends and her drugs and this and that. And that's what struck me the most was nobody even realized what I had done. So I went to school on the next Monday. This was on the weekend. I went to school the next Monday. And for the next four years, I went to school and never told a soul what I had done. Oh, I, I, I lived with this, with this event that I tried to do. I still lived with, within my depression. I still lived with, within my, my thoughts of hopelessness and abandonment, but I kept that inside of me and ultimately went into my adulthood and kept these same suppressed thoughts and emotions within me into my adulthood. I got married at 20 years old, didn't have the value of being a great, a, a good husband, had kids, you know, at, at, at an early age as well. And I did not have the value of being a good father. So I, I went into my marriage and it was ultimately over before it even started because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't even know who I was. How can I love somebody else when I don't even know how to love myself? So when I was 18 years old, before I got married, my mom, uh, she, she started to realize what she was doing. She started to realize what she was doing to her family, to her kids. She walked herself into the local police department and basically said, I need help. I need mm -hmm. help. And, and they ended up relo relocating her about a hundred miles away from her house. And, and she went into a rehab center while she was in the rehab center. My mom, my mom and dad ended up getting a divorce because I didn't know this at the time, but when she was, was taking things out of the house to, to do her drugs, when that eventually ran dry, she was selling her body on the streets to pay for her drugs. So she was, she was basically prostituting herself. So once my dad found that out, they ended up getting a, a divorce and they split up and, and, you know, so, so now 
my mother was a hundred miles away. I was still living with my dad. My dad still had the issues, you know, he was still drinking. He was still, you know, doing his things. So I was, I was lost at 18 years old. I was lost. I was, I was, you know, just, just stuck in this spiral. And I remember my mother got herself clean in the rehab center uh, for the next six years, actually no, for the next eight years. Always, always attempted to reach out. She always wanted to heal the relationship that we had. And I never let her in because I was so angry with her. I, 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 was, I was upset. I was angry at women. I was, I basically hated women. Mm-hmm. And it was the thing that happened to me because of the, the, the things that, you know, the feelings that I felt from her, you know, aban- the, the abandonment, the hopelessness. So she always tried to, to, to heal this relationship and I never let her in. She always wanted to see her, her grandsons. I had, I had two grand, uh, two sons at the time, uh, I have four now, but at that time I had two and <clears throat> she, she always wanted to, you know, to be around them. And I was just stubborn and I never let her in because I was, I was angry. So at 26 years old, because because of her her lifestyle, she developed hepatitis C and cirrhosis of the liver. So she had two liver transplants by the time I was 26, and she was on the list for her third liver transplant. So I went down to see her. She was at UCLA, UCLA Medical Center, and I remember sitting in the room in the hospital room. She was on dialysis. She was in you know tubes were in her mouth. She couldn't talk. I remember sitting in the, in the room with her, and it was the first time in my life that I started to feel some gratitude that she was still there, that she was still alive. First time. So I talked, you know, and I told her a little bit about what what was going on, you know, in in my life and what was going on with her grandsons. And and I could tell she was just soaking it up. And and I remember getting up to walk out of the hospital room that day and I got to the door and she, she made this murmured sound because she had tubes all in her, in her mouth. And she stopped me at the door and I turned around and we just locked eyes. And when we locked eyes, I could tell what she was telling me. She was she was telling me that she was sorry for everything that she had done for me to, to me as a child. So I looked at her and 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 I just said, I know. And that's all I could say at the time was I know. I went home that that day. The next morning I came back down to the hospital and she was on life support. Wow. Wow. So one day I had gratitude that she was alive and the next day she was gone. You know, she, she was on life support. We ended up having to pull the plug um, and, you know, she, she transitioned. So I really think that she needed to, to, to give me that apology for me to know that she was sorry in order for her to transition. But after that happened, I went into the darkest place of my life because not only was I living with the, the thoughts and memories as a child from the things that happened to me, but now I had this unmeasurable amount of guilt for not letting her back into my life when she cleaned herself up. So <clears throat> my marriage crumbled. Um, my relationship with my two boys crumbled. I didn't know how to how to see any gratitude in my life. So then after I divorced my wife, actually my wife divorced me and I don't blame her one bit. After she divorced me, I went from woman to woman to woman to woman to woman because I was suppressing the things inside of me and I was trying to mask everything that was going inside of me with other things because I didn't know how to talk about the things that were that were eating me up inside. I was masking everything. I was I was I was masking it with women. I was masking it with the gym. You know, the gym was my my meditative place. But meditation doesn't work if you can't fix the problem, if you can't fix the root of the problem. It will quiet your mind, but it will not fix the problem. So that's what I was doing. I was masking it with women and I was masking it with my meditation. So when I was 32 years old, <clears throat> I was sitting at, at, at home in my apartment, in my quiet apartment, because, you know, I just throw everything around me. And when you're when you're, you're by yourself, you have so much time to really sit there and think about the things that happened to you in your life and, and what you're doing and what type of energy that you're creating for yourself and the type of energy that you're expelling out into the universe. So I took it upon myself to drive down to where my mother was buried. Wow. Something, something hit me this day. I drove down to where she was buried and I remember stopping at a floral shop and getting some flowers and pulling into the cemetery. And as soon as I got out of my car, I felt the hairs 
stand up on the back of my neck and I started walking to her grave and I started crying and, and just, you know, I was like, oh, it's coming, it's coming. So I get to her gravesite and I just let it out. I tell her everything. I tell her all of the things that she made me feel as a child, all of the things that I wanted to say to her growing up as an adult. I yelled, I screamed, I cried, I was on the ground. But what I did that day was I released everything inside of me. I spoke about my thoughts and my feelings and my emotions and I didn't hold back. Mm. And what it was, was it, it, it wasn't what I needed. It wasn't what she needed to hear. That that's that's not what it was. It was me giving myself the grace of being human to realize that I had thoughts and emotions and I acknowledged them. And that for that that is the message that I want to tell people that are going through things in their life or that have gone through things in their life that have suppressed them. Talking about your feelings and emotions is not for the other person. It's for you to for you to understand that you have feelings and emotions. You're giving yourself the grace of being human. And that's what we need to do to heal. They can buy your story, Jason. <laughs> you tell it so well. <laughs> I was just blown away. It's like we could just hear you like for a long time. Well, it was uh, definitely a... Um, a long ride for me. I mean, I lived inside of, of depression for since I was up until I was 32 years old. And how old are you now? I'm, I'm 39. See, <clears throat> well, I can definitely relate to you regarding no one checked on you because I, I did things such as you did, like in your position and no one checked on me. No one noticed, like, for example, my parents, when I got, you know, different earring or like, you know, noticed things on me because they weren't paying attention to me. And it's mm -hmm. like, I for like three years, you didn't even notice, you know? Um, but yeah, paying attention to your kids is really important. And one thing I wanna say regarding, you know, your mom was holding on, you know, for the forgiveness and the interaction with the eyes, and then it was her time to go. But the fact that you're blessed with that moment, I feel like it was some kind of healing and closure because if you didn't have that, it may have been possibly worse for you. What do you think? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think that, um for me, that was necessary. I had to see that. I had to know. I had to know that she was okay to go in the end. You know, maybe not so much at that moment, but now it gives me gratitude that we had that moment because I know that she was. I, I don't want to say she was necessarily at complete peace, but she had some sort of peace when she went. Mm -hmm. And and I truly believe that the day that I went to the the cemetery and, and spoke to her that day, she heard everything that I needed to say. And I know that she's at peace now. And I know that I'm at peace. You know, and, and I wasn't. I wasn't for a long time. And and even even after that day, you know, even after going down there and, and releasing everything and releasing that weight off of my shoulders that day, it was my starting point. It wasn't the time that I actually healed because, you know, we we develop a, a, um, it, it, we all have a thermostat setting. You know, we all download the files that that have been you know given to us throughout our lives from the time we're born up until now and even after i released everything that day you still will tend to go back to the person that you have been for so long because you're basically operating like a computer program so it takes consistent awareness on where your thoughts and emotions are coming from in order to make that change. And I've, I've been on that path since I was 32 until now. And that's basically wow. what I teach other people now is to how is, is how to gain that awareness and how to recalibrate your mind and reset that thermostat setting to become your, your best, ver the best version of yourself. Wow. That's incredible. So what's your relationship with your kids now? You have four kids, right? I have four kids. Um, so this is this is one of my biggest messages on why we need to talk about the things that we that that are bothering us that that we are suppressing because we will destroy the things around us. My two boys during that relationship that I destroyed, <clears throat> I'm still attempting to repair that relationship today. Wow. So we need we need to talk about things and not suppress them because the energy that we expel to other people it's not for me it, it's for me the, the things that i that i experienced as a child are nothing compared to the people that i hurt along the way in my life 
so that is is the biggest message that i want to give people you know what surviving is easy for me and when i look back surviving is easy but when you hurt other people because of who you've become that's the hardest part so my relationship with my two boys during that marriage are still damaged today i'm still attempting to repair that and and what we need to do is not focus so much on the lack because as as humans we're designed to focus on lack that that's just the way our brains are wired what we need to do is look at things from a different perspective look at things and see the gratitude in the situation so i look at that and i look at the relationship with my two boys right now and i think this had to happen to me in order for me to, to to gain my awareness and to make that switch, to break the cycle. So I'm taking this time to become the best version of myself so I can take that and teach my boys how to become the best version of themselves. Because they have downloaded the files just like I did when I was young from the time that I was there up until you know their, their age right now. And I need to become the best version of myself before I can teach them how to do it for them. Mm. You can't help anybody until you help, you help yourself. So that's the gratitude that I see inside of the situation. We need to do that with every single thing in our life, is find the gratitude in a situation that is causing us hesitation and disruption. I'm gonna show you something real quick. Mm -hmm. So I am certified in the law of attraction, so I'm huge on, on alignment, you know, being mm -hmm. in alignment, getting your energy in alignment. And, and mm -hmm. I like, I don't know if you've seen this before I've done this on my on my lives. So being in alignment, I'm gonna use this rope as an example, okay? Being in complete alignment, living within your spirit, looks like this rope. There's no knots, no hesitations, no disruptions. It's just straight energy, right? Every time something happens in our life that causes a disruption within our energy or, or you know, um, really, really throws us out of whack, you end up with not in your energy. If you don't learn how to look at that disruption from a different perspective and create a new emotion, it's gonna stay there, okay? And if you do that over and over and over again, before you know it, you end up with, with knots all in your energy and you don't know how to get yourself out. You get stuck in a depression and and you know you just feel like it's the end of the world and you don't know how to get out of it. But what you need to do is every time something comes up in your life and creates a knot within your energy, you need to look at it, raise your awareness. Why did this happen to me? Maybe this happened to me because like, I'm gonna use myself in, as an example. Everything happened to me in my life because I was designed to raise my awareness and stop the cycle that has been going on generation after generation after generation. So I take what happened to me as my gift to the world so I can stop those things. I take what happened to me as my gift to become aware to stop the cycle so it doesn't continue on with my kids. Wow. So I find that gratitude in the situation and then I'm able to get myself back into alignment. And we have to do that with everything in our lives. Otherwise, we'll end up with a with a rope full of knots. Jason, when are you doing a TED Talk? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're gonna have to give me give me grace on that because I I just started getting in front of a camera about wow. a couple ago, so. wow, it's so <laughs> incredible. You know, no one would be able to tell. Uh, I mean, same with me. It's been six months. No one would be able to tell, right? How far we both come and you right. as well. Right. And that uh, once again is Jason's fiance, who will be on tomorrow at 11 EST. And one thing I want to say is I just learned something from you because right now, you know, I'm creating something for Try Together. And I just learned that the people that I've hurt along the way, that just brought it up for me because when the way you said it, the way you approached it just made me realize because of who I had become because of my trauma, those friendships, those friends I hurt, those romantic relationships where I broke hearts, but it wasn't me, you know, it's like I was sick, you know? Yeah. I just really pointed it out to me and it's like, wow, but we have to give ourselves grace and it's, you know, not my fault that it was just my environment and I couldn't help it, but to behave in those ways. Right. What would you say to 
what would you say a practical step can be for someone who, you know, is feeling clinically depressed? Like, for example, do you suggest them find a mentor, someone who can uplift them, such as like Les did for me, you know, Les Brown? Like, what would you say to someone who is really down and about right now? I would say uh, number one is change yeah. your proximity. Mm -hmm. Find people, find people that are going to uplift your spirit, like you did, Les Brown. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Find people, find find people that are going to show you what a positive frequency is. Mm -hmm. Because we are the average of the six people that we spend time with the most. Yeah. You spend time with six people that are in a negative state, you're gonna, or mm -hmm. five, five five people, you're gonna be the six. I think that's how it is. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna become that that person. So spend your time, spend your free time, watch videos, watch YouTube, you know, watch, watch, mm -hmm. Brown, watch Lisa Nichols and, mm -hmm. and start to realize, you know, what positive energy can do in your life. And, and then really, I know it's hard, but, but you have to really find the gratitude in each situation in your life, find the gratitude that, that makes you find something that makes you feel good emotions mm -hmm. because that's what you need to pay attention to is our emotions. Mm -hmm getting negative emotions and bad emotions, you know what, then that, that's just a trigger. Okay, my thoughts are in the wrong place. Wow. So we, we need to, to really pay attention to those emotions. And, and it is very hard, but find a safe place to openly speak about what you're feeling. I just feel a great energy <laughs> from you. Like, I'm, I feel like this is a coaching for me one on one. Like, this is <laughs> Incredible. Seriously. Who agrees? You guys should comment. Seriously, it's just so good. So, right. yeah, share with us about, you, you work with Lisa Nichols, right? Like you went to one of her events. Share so, with us about that. This is, this, this is crazy. So, <laughs> when me and Brisa met, uh, or not met, when we reconnected, I was... You know, I was on my path of recovery, but I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there yet. Um, so Brisa was already, already working with Lisa. You know, you'll hear about more about that. Excuse yeah. me, more about that tomorrow. So she was already working with Lisa. Um, I had no idea who Lisa was. Yeah. No <laughs> so, so uh, Brisa was like, "I need to go down, or we need to go down to San Diego because Brisa was doing her nails. Brisa was doing Lisa's nails before an event." Wow. Yeah. And she's like, I need to go down to San Diego and do Lisa's nails. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, we'll, we'll go and, and I'll go find a gym. So I, you know, I was all into the gym. I was like, you know, okay. Mm -hmm. So I went down to a gym. Lisa, uh, Brisa was doing Lisa's nails. And after the gym, I was like, okay, I'm done. So I drove back over to Lisa's house and, and they're like, oh, come inside. So I, I went inside and, and, you know, I didn't know who she was. She offered me barbecue. And so I'm sitting there eating barbecue chicken and, and sitting in her living room. And then she starts talking to me. And this woman has the most energetic look on her face and just so much power in the way that she looks at you, mm. and the way that she talks to you. And I was just taken aback. I was just struck like, damn, like, oh, like I just, I just got the chills and I was like, wow, this, this woman is amazing. So she says, you're going to my next event. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. So she put me in VIP um, and I went to her event and I didn't know what it was. I thought it was just something for speakers. And then all of the self-development exercises started to come up. <laughs> and right away, my internal protection system was like, nope, this is not for me. I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk out of the back of the room. So I got up and I started to walk out of the back of the room. And Lisa from the stage said, Jason, turn around and go sit back down because this is for you. So she she called me out. She called me out in front of everybody. So I was like, ooh. So I turned around. I went and sat back down and I went through breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. And that is exactly what I needed in my life mm. to move forward. And ever since that day, I was introduced to everybody within her tribe and now my tribe. And they've taught me how to just openly share my story and package everything up and, and get my message out to the world. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, like Les did it for me, Lisa did it for you. Absolutely. We're Absolutely. all friends. 
Yes. No friends. This is incredible. Wow. So do you really find that that was the pivoting moment? Like, do you feel like that was the, the growth? Yeah, no. Oh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it just goes to show you that you know, the universe works in mysterious ways, but the energy that you put out there ultimately comes back to you. So when I learned to to change, you know, at, at when I when I went down to, to talk to my mother, that was a pivoting moment. So my energy started to shift. And, and when you start to, to emit positive energy, positive things come back to you in your life. So I feel like, you know, because I was emitting positive energy, all of these positive things started to happen to me. And this was an absolute pivoting moment. This was an out. This was like, like I was at, I was climbing the mountain and then finally I saw, you know, I saw the valley and that's, that's what it was for me. It was like, this is, this is what I'm here for. This is my passion. This is my purpose. And, and this is where it all, all came to fruition. Share with us a bit about, you know, the time you were with Brissa at the time. So how did you change, you know, as a man, as a person towards her? You know, um, after that moment, I, I really started to learn how to love myself. Mm -hmm. I really started to embrace everything that happened to me as a child, I, I started to embrace everything that happened to me as an adult, all of the, the failures that happened, that, that I thought that I was experiencing. I started to learn how to change my perspective and realize that they weren't failures. If you look at the word F-A-I-L and, and break it down, you know what fail is finding answers in life. So I started to really learn how to change my, my perspective on everything. And I started to learn how to love myself. And when you start to learn how to love yourself, and you can you can ultimately love other people with everything that you've got, with your soul, with your spirit. So for me, that is what you know our relationship is all about, is is we love ourselves first mm -hmm. so that we're able to show each other our ultimate, you know, love of, of loving, loving each other. And, and I know people ask us all the time, how do you, how do you have a relationship like you guys have? How do you guys, you know, do the things that you do? The secret is loving yourself first because you can't love somebody else until you love yourself first. And when you're living within alignment, yeah. when you know how to get yourself in alignment, then everything else just, just follows. You know, there's, there's nothing else that you don't have to, to, to work hard at it anymore. You don't have, to sacrifice anything. You don't have to, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, try and change somebody because when you live in alignment within your spirit, it just, it all falls. Mm. Apart. And that's, that's the secret. Jason, this is all making me reflect on my own life. <laughs> Honestly, you know, it's the morning time. It's really like, wow. You know, it makes you think about your own stuff. Right. Right. Wow. Share with us about, the stuff you and uh, you know Rissa are doing now. So, like you were sharing about the camper with me. Like, what are the sacrifices you've had to make? You know, I'm going to share the camper with everybody right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, when we when we embarked on this journey, uh, when we realized what we were here for, we realized that you know I, I worked in the water industry for for 13 years, and and I was uh, uh, you know I, I worked in heavy equipment before that, and then mm -hmm. when I'm in the when I was in the water industry, I worked out at the base for the army and, 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 you know, once we decided to do this, I was like, this is, it's going to take an investment, you know, we're gonna be all over the place. We're going to be at events. We're going to be taking courses. We're going to be doing this, doing that. And, and it's a lot, you know, it's, it's a lot. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, you know, our coaches have, have just really instilled in us. If you want to make change, if you want to grow, you got to be radical. You got to take radical action. So wow. we said, we took radical action and we went out and we bought a camper. We bought, we bought an RV and we invested everything that we've got into what we're doing right now. So yes, we live in an RV. Um, if you do everything out of an RV, if you want to make change, if you want to make, you know, if you want to grow, you got to get outside your, of your comfort zone because there's no growth within comfort zones. And this was the very first step that we did and, and come to wow. find out, you know, we love it. We absolutely, absolutely love it. And I, and we're not going to change it. Even if we're, you know, even if we start doing Ted talks and this and that, we're, yeah. still, 
we're still going to live in a camper because we love it. And we're going to travel all over the place and just do what we do from, from our, from our camper. So wow. uh, yeah, that, that's, that's, uh, I, I just, I wanted to share that with you guys because I think that. Oh, it's so great. Yes. And what, what else, what else were you asking me? I'm sorry. Like, yeah, what sacrifices to so the sacrifices, you know, to change, right? Change regarding financial. Have you experienced yep. anything else? Like what has been like some of the most challenging days and why for you? Uh, you know, the most challenging days is, you know, because we're, because we're still in, in startup, so to speak. I mean, we, yes. we are, we are kind of, we are kind of scaling, but we're not really there yet. Um, yes. Just figuring everything out, you know, as far as business goes, because like me too. <laughs> Not, you know, we came we came from completely different uh, different areas. Mm -hmm. of life. Risa was a hairdresser. You know, I, I worked in the water industry. I was a, um, you know, I ran heavy equipment. This is not something that that I'm used to. So it's just learning, mm -hmm. thing. Um, you know, really, really having the patience to to allow it to grow is is a little bit uh, has been a little difficult, but it's it's working. Everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. Everything. One of the things we we teach is is EIP. Everything mm -hmm. is perfect. Everything is perfect. Everything in life happens for a greater good. Everything in life happens so you can grow into who you ultimately need to become. So you can grow That's into high. living within your spirit. So everything that happens that causes us, you know, some some hesitation or a little bit of disruption, to go back mm -hmm. to that book, we look at it like, no, this is happening for a reason. So that that's we use it every day. We use we use the rope every day. We use EIP every day because every day something is going to happen that's going to mm -hmm. throw us out of alignment. You know, it, it could be something within your business. It could be something within your relationship. It could be something that happened at work. But every time something comes up, you need to, to get yourself back into alignment by looking at it from that different perspective. So good. I want to ask you going back to your relationships with your dad. So do you, is your dad around? My dad is around. He is uh, still, he still drinks. Um, th this is the thing. Um, wh when I, when we talked a little bit about my childhood, how I was, mm -hmm. how we download files yeah. from our parents, from the people that were around. <clears throat> he also downloaded files from his parents. Yeah. Things happened to him throughout his life. Yeah. And he, still living within his darkness. Mm. So you have to want to change in order to get yourself out of that darkness. Yeah. Nobody can convince you to change. And he is still living inside of that darkness. He is still living in a depressive state. He's still living in a negative frequency. And he emits that negative energy out to the universe every mm. single day. And it comes back to him every single day. So I tell him I'm here. I'm here when you want to talk. I'm here when you want to try to, you know, shed some light, try to gain your awareness on the things that have happened to you. Mm -hmm. But until then, you know, I, I can't do anything. You know, I, I just let him know that yeah. I'm here. he has to want to change. Yeah. It's not your responsibility. I can relate to that regarding my parents. I, I can't, they're 74, 64. I, I can't change you. <laughs> you know, right. it's, it's, you know, they're on the other side. If you follow Sadhguru, like Sadhguru says, once someone goes off to the psychotic realm, like, you know, that's the other side. And it's really hard to come back from psychotic. Exactly. That's why it's really important to take care of our mind. And I think the sacrifice you and, you know, Barisa has made to, you know, do this for people, to help people. It's even though it's a startup, it's like you, we already see the end result, right? Like that's your dream. That's your goal. So I really feel like this is important and needed and it's very few people go on this journey, you know, to embark on this journey. You and I are too. And like, it's not easy every day. I can say like, I'm doing this alone. Like I don't have a team yet. I don't have a partner or anything like that. So it's really just the people in my programs, right? Supporting mm -hmm. one another and really just doing it on my own to have that mindset to wake up every day. Like, okay, I have to get this done. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm on my own now. Like it's no more, you know, relying on parents and things like that. So it's, I, what I have to do, I yeah. think that's what it comes down to, and I also may get a camper. <laughs> like I really think, because you know, paying monthly rent, it's like it just goes. It's not your own, you know. Um, 
I want to ask you, like, how can people, you know, who are tuning in right now, um, you know, support you and Barista more? You know, just, I think just, just live by our message, what we put out there, you know, find the gratitude mm -hmm. in your life. Really find the gratitude in your life and, and spread that, spread that to other people because so many people need to see positive things in their life, especially with what's been going on, you know, yeah. with this pandemic and, and everyday people are losing loved ones and it's very easy for people to fall inside of a, dep of a depressive state. Whether it be, you know, like Brisa speaks, she speaks to stroke survivors, you know, yeah. There's so many things in life that cause you to fall inside of a depressive state and, and people mm. need positivity. People need hope. Yeah. Or so just, you know, start a conversation with somebody at a grocery store. You know, tell you just 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 spread the positivity. For us, I mean, that's what we love to see is, is people just spreading positivity and, and people talking about uh, you know, greater things in life to to really really get people in a positive uh, positive frequency and, and I would say you know just just do that and if you know somebody that that really needs help you know you, you can send them our way you know if if we resonate with them and our message resonates with them then you know that would that would be amazing but you know sometimes people aren't ready for that and the people that are not ready for that just, just try to instill positive things in their life <laughs> right when you stopped I took a sip <laughs> Yeah, this has been wonderful, and I look forward to having Barisa on tomorrow. And you guys can go to www.begreaterofficial.com to get in touch with both Jason and Barisa. This is really remarkable, and I'm going to watch it again, and it truly I learned something from this. So if you guys learned something from this, please do follow them, reach out to them, and get the free gift, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. Thank you for gracing Chai together today. This was really wonderful and meaningful, and I feel grateful that gratitude. Thank you for having me. Thank you Thanks so much for your time. Bye. Take care.